It's time, America. Time for Walter Winchell. Presented to you by Gruen, the precision watch. Gruen, the finest watch you can wear. Gruen, the finest watch you can give. Brings you the man who gives America the news. Walter Winchell of the New York Daily Mirror and the Washington Post. Mr. and Mr. North of South American, all the ships at sea, let's go to press. Dallas, Texas. The Texas special of the Katy Line has been wrecked near Roy City, Texas, between San Antonio and St. Lou. Several reported killed. Just happened. We may have more on it later. San Juan, Puerto Rico. The Nationalist Party of Puerto Rico is on the march. They are plotting violence and maybe a revolution after raiding armories for their guns. New York City. The police in New York have a new hot lead on the murder of a Bronx mobster. He was killed last week for welching on commissions due to a dope ring in East Harlem. New York City. Mayor-elect Wagner will name his police commissioner this week, maybe Wednesday. The field is now down to six, including Assistant District Attorney Vincent O'Connor and, surprise, Chief Inspector Rothengast, two good men. Washington, D.C. It's a baby boy for the Peter Campbell Browns at Columbia Hospital, Washington. Mr. Brown is New York City's next commissioner of investigation. New York City. It's a baby boy for the John Costellos at Leroy Sanitarium. The lovely mother is the song star, Nancy Donovan. New York City, hear this. Dorothy Parker, the famous playwright and poet, will make a speech in New York on the 17th at a hall in Greenwich Village, probably on 4th Street, on behalf of the communists, now in American jails, for conspiring to overthrow the United States. Good girl, good girl. Reno, a woman named Mrs. Emanuel Block, the same name as the lawyer for the condemned Rosenbergs, won a very quiet divorce in Reno two weeks ago. Wichita Falls, Texas. Mrs. Charles P. McGaha, now of Beverly Hills, California, is suing her husband for what I hear will be $10 million. He is the president of City National Bank, Wichita Falls, Texas. New York. Sonia Haney is at Lenox Hill Hospital, New York, for plastic surgery. Washington. The Institute of Pacific Relations, investigated for two years by the McCarran Committee, is quietly planning to get away from it all, meaning quit. Boston. Professor Wendell Furry of Harvard will be subpoenaed by the Senate Investigating Committee sometime this week. The hearings will be public. Fort Monmouth. The McCarthy Committee has summoned 20 present and former employees at this Army base. At least 10 of them will use the Fifth Amendment as alibis. Attention, Havana newspapers. American authorities know the identity of the person selected to assassinate President Batista of Cuba. He is a member of a Cuban revolutionary mob in Boston, New York, and Chicago. Once a waiter at the Harvard Club here in New York City. The international clocks, Moscow. Marshal Ivan Bragamian, called the best brain in the Russian army, has failed to review his troops for the first time in eight years. Marshal Bragamian, chief of the Baltic and Arctic defense, was a very close friend of Berea. Budapest, Pastor Naimola. The German minister is now in Hungary on a mission for Moscow. Hong Kong, the Red Army has practically taken over northwest China. The rumors say a great H-bomb installation is being built in the Great Atli Mountain. Belgrade, Marshal Tito's general staff has told him that in a showdown, they would sooner fight with the Red Army than against it. Manila, the biggest Far East intelligence news in six months is this. Paris and Moscow are now in secret top deals for an Indo-China armistice. This means, ladies and gentlemen, the United States may inherit another war, supporting Indo-China nationalists as we did the Greeks. The Washington ticker, another sensation, will break next week before a Senate committee probing Reds. The FBI reported him to the White House in 1949, but the Truman administration promoted him anyway. He is still a top man at United States Immigration. The Veldi Investigating Committee is trying to get the application forms used during the war by the OSS to find out who recommended whom. Many of the files are missing. The feud between Defense Secretary Wilson and the big brass at the Pentagon, I am told, has passed from a flaming white heat to a cold, deadly hate, the number one feud of them all in Washington. The White House reporters last Friday reported that Assistant Secretary of State Beadle Smith would resign very soon. This confirms another Winchell tip of last broadcast on October the 18th. 
In the New York federal courthouse, the attaches and other informed people expect Judge Noonan will find red fugitive Robert Thompson guilty of contempt and sentence him to an extra three years. Thompson, a decorated war hero for our side, is a communist chief. A top government personality, incensed, outraged over a big party given by prominent New Yorkers at the Club 21 on 52nd Street to a former call house madam have complained to powerful people in Washington. As a result, United States immigration is already in action to deport Polly Adler, the author of a bestseller. Mr. and Mrs. United States, the topic of very great interest this week was the controversy over cigarettes and cancer of the lung. Never was any newspaper man's responsibility to, to others and his own integrity to himself a heavier burden than mine tonight when I tell you the facts as I know them for and against the cigarette now on trial for its life. Against the cigarette is this evidence. First, a series of studies based on the questioning of victims of lung cancer resulted in this finding. Every one of the studies reported that there is an association between excessive smoking and cancer of the lung. I mean excessive smoking, not ordinary smoking. Second, cigarette tar produce cancer in 50% of the mice painted with it. Now whether or not this is a proven test, I do not know. Third, some lung surgeons who operated in certain cases reported that there is a direct relationship between excessive cigarette smokers and lung cancer. And very significantly, their medical opinions are supported by some clinical records. But 25 other scientists say that the case against the cigarette is not proven. These specialists state that the substantial majority of heavy smokers do not contract lung cancer. They also tell me that these cancers have not been produced as yet in other species such as rats, rabbits, and guinea pigs. Now my editorial opinion is this. The scientists may be unconvinced that the cigarette is guilty, but I am fully convinced that it is very far from innocent. To say that a majority of heavy smokers do not get lung cancer leaves the vital question unanswered of whether a minority, a minority of excessive smokers do get it. One cancer, in my opinion, one cancer victim is always one too many. Now merely as a reporter and certainly not as a scientist, this is my conclusion. I still smoke about 10 cigarettes a day but the burden of proof has shifted. It is no longer up to the scientists to prove that cigarettes cause cancer. It is the duty of all concerned to prove that they do not. And now back to Walter Winchell. Ladies and gentlemen, I just received a message from the teletypes that the mother of former heavyweight champion Joe Lewis passed in Detroit this afternoon. I am very sorry to hear it, Joe. New York City. The big city is in a good mood again now that the 11-day newspaper strike is an unpleasant memory. Nobody won that one. The real lo losers, ladies and gentlemen, were the many war veterans and blind news dealers on the corner. They have no union to pay them juicy strike salaries. The newspaper guild, by the way, paid out about $165,000 in strike wages when less than 400 uh, photo engravers in another union walked out. Some New York publishers and many of the strikers made me feel pretty good this week. They sent me letters saying that last Sunday night's comments decided them to go back to work. New Yorkers have another hit, according to most of the critics. John Murray Anderson's review, Almanac, at the Imperial Theatre. The best of the new moving pictures is Hondo. Hondo at the Paramount Theatre. John Wayne does the Bing Bang, Bang bit with Geraldine Page. Some of the critics said Hondo is as good as Shane, one of the best westerns ever made. The new Collier's Magazine has a nifty bit of fiction about the Star Club in New York, with an attractive double spread on a typical Star Club New Year's Eve midnight. 
New York will have another argument to argue about maybe tomorrow or Tuesday. Jack Dragnet Webb made a very big denial of Jack O'Brien's scoop that Webb would not next marry Dorothy Town of Hollywood. Now O'Brien's paper, the New York Journal American, and the reporter himself will challenge Mr. Webb to a lie detector test perhaps Tuesday or Monday. We just want the facts, man. New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, regarding my comments earlier tonight about excessive cigarette smoking and lung cancer, here is a very thrilling scoop about a very thrilling man. The experiments reported by scientists so far were based on rubbing cigarette tar on the skin of mice. It did produce cancer in the mice. A New York cancer specialist, an advisor to the Runyon Cancer Committee, is quietly making the very same test on his own skin. What a man. And now, back to Walter Winchell. One item in the last line I know, Dallas, Texas. An automobile crashed into the Texas Special of the Katy Line here tonight. The impact derailed the train. Five occupants of the automobile were killed. About 30 passengers on the train were hurt. No one on the train was killed. And that, Mr. and Mrs. 48, winds up another edition over 400 ABC stations until next Sunday night or next week at the very same time. This is Walter Winchell, who disagrees with Adlai Stevenson's statement that the four fears have replaced the four freedoms. America, Mr. Stevenson, has more Minutemen than Boogeymen. Good night. <laughs> greatest gifts you can give a man is real shaving comfort. So this Christmas, give him something he's never had before. Give him Rise, the push-button shave. Only a dollar eighteen. <laughs>